<clears throat> Thank you very much, Volker, and um, uh, everyone at, at CAUS. It's a pleasure to be back again uh, at the conference on uh, CCS, CCUS, Geothermal Energy. I uh, was there last year in person. This was great. And uh, this year, unfortunately, it's online, but uh, that's better than, than nothing, I, I uh, suppose. It's very nice to be here. I'm very happy. And um, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to start here uh, right away. So um, there's a lot of people have been working on combining CCS with uh, geothermal energy extraction in my group, uh, as you see over here. Um, and then also there's external collaborators uh, and this has been funded by multiple funding agencies and companies over the years. Um, so let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> so I will first talk about, uh, we call this CO2 plume geothermal, CPG, this concept. Uh, then there will be some generic studies of CPG performance, uh, and then some case studies and a summary. <clears throat> First of all, um, the idea is that uh, when you do CC, uh, CO2 capture and you store it underground, you might as well uh, bring the geothermally heated CO2 back up to the surface, run it through a turbine, generate electricity, or use the heat directly, cool it, and then re-inject the CO2 back down uh, with the CO2 stream coming from the CO2 capture facility. So all of the CO2 is eventually permanently stored. No CO2 is released again to the atmosphere. And um, what happens here, as you will see in a moment, is that the electricity generation efficiency is about to twice to three times as high uh, than if you do this with water, uh, the traditional way. The reservoir here uh, should be fairly deep, so two to four kilometers, so that you have decent subsurface temperatures. The important part is because of the efficiency increase here uh, with CO2 compared to water, we get away with uh, as low reservoir temperatures as say 100 degrees Celsius to economically with an LCOE that's acceptable, generate electricity geothermally. <clears throat> So this is what it looks like in another uh, sketch here. Uh, and this is just to point out that this could be um, a five spot well pattern, an inverted one with an injection well in the center and four production wells at the corner. And also it's important for me to point out that this CO2 plume grows over time and that more and more injection production wells can be drilled and multiple such uh, five spot well patterns can be envisioned. So here you can see four of these patterns and then of course you can join uh, these wells um, uh, or they have in multiple patterns they would be used. <clears throat> Um, here's a, a very, uh, the, the reason why you get two to three times the efficiency uh, is simply because uh, the mobility of supercritical CO2 is about four times under base case conditions at two and a half kilometers and 100 degrees Celsius. So at four, four times that of water. And so in this thermal energy flux equation, you see that you get a factor of four increase. However, unfortunately, the specific heat capacity of supercritical CO2 is only one half that of water. So your factor four gets cut into a factor two under these conditions. Um, so let's look at some generic studies of CPG performance. And uh, first of all, this was our first uh, CPG paper in geophysical research letters where we showed um, that indeed you get this two to three times uh, more heat extraction rate. Um, and uh, because you have the higher mass flow rate of the CO2 going through the reservoir uh, than when you use water. So this has nothing to do with the CO2 turbine. Of course, uh, we use the CO2 turbine, um, but it's all about the reservoir and the fluid percolating through the reservoir at four times the mass flow rate, all else being equal. Um, this then shows that uh, for permeabilities that are in the lower range, you also get more, uh, this is now electric power output, per doublet uh, or five spot well pattern um, uh, than with water in the subsurface. Uh, so it also is particularly good at uh, lower permeability reservoirs. And this then shows the net power in blue uh, output for CPG here on, on the left compared to some organic Rankine cycles where you get a lot less power out. <clears throat> So um, since uh, I was at KAUS last year in January 2020, we published maybe five, six papers on CPG. And I just want to point out a few things that came out since then. Uh, this is the first one I want to mention. And uh, here, of course, I want to point out that um, the larger reservoir thickness leads to much more power output and that there's an optimal reservoir radius that maximizes the average power for a given time period. 
um, we can show that we can sustain power generation over 50 years in typical cases and that an overestimation of the reservoir radius affects the long-term power output less than an underestimation. And by reservoir radius, I mean the distance from injector to producer. <clears throat> this is another study that we did last year. And um, the interesting part here is that if we have uh, water that actually enters, uh, dissolved water that enters, it's dissolved in the CO2 that enters the production well, that you get water exolution in the production well on the way up um, out of the CO2. And that's an exothermic reaction that can increase your power output by a factor uh, by 41, up to 41%. So this is, uh, so we actually like having water um, dissolved in the CO2 and then exsolving on the way up. The problem is though, it cannot be too much because then we get liquid loading and I'll show that in a moment uh, later on. So this uh, is paper in review uh, right now. Uh, and uh, this is uh, our new gen geo model or simulator that combines, as you see over here, the reservoir simulation with well simulation with the surface power plant and the capital cost and LCOE calculation. So it's basically a heat, electricity and, uh, and cost uh, model. And uh, so we can, we use this now a lot and this is used in basically all the papers in 2020 uh, to calculate power output and the cost of CPG systems. And this is just an example for the US where you see uh, that we, we think that one could uh, um, <clears throat> install about 200 gigawatt electricity with CPG in the US uh, for green, in the greenfield conditions of below 10 cents a kilowatt hour, $100 per megawatt hour. Um, I want to point out that you can combine it with enhanced gas or oil recovery. This is with enhanced uh, gas recovery. It increases the total amount of producible energy, uses some existing data sets and infrastructures like wells, provides energy, electricity and heat and revenue for both CCS and gas field operation and extends the useful lifetime of the gas field so you don't uh, get into the costly um, decommissioning phase quite so quickly. It can delay it by several decades. And so we've simulated this, this is for an example a case for Gröning in the Netherlands. And you see here is conventional natural gas um, recovery, then an enhanced gas recovery, and then CPG. And you can show how much power you get out of, or electricity you get out of a system for the, during the CPG phase over here. <clears throat> So let's look at some uh, case studies. And first off, I want to point out, this is what Mahmoud Hefni, and I post now, he's a postdoc in my group. He was at KAUS last year. What he has done here is for, uh, <clears throat> for Egypt, uh, for um, the Gulf of Suez, he, he has looked into CPG operations in a, in a depleted gas uh, or, or oil reservoir. And um, he did some poor network analysis at the Paul Scherer Institute here in, in Switzerland, uh, near Zurich. And, uh, and there, <clears throat> from that, we get a poor network analysis and can put a poor network uh, together for our simulations and eventually actually go to the entire reservoir and simulate CPG for such a depleted uh, oil reservoir, in this case, in the Gulf of Suez. And so uh, these are then his simulations that he showed last year. And uh, I just want to point out in the interest of time, the result and uh, overall, uh, we estimate the potential net electric power generation capacity for the entire Rasputran oil field with a footprint of 15 square kilometers of 12 megawatt electric. And we published this in IJGGC uh, 2020. <clears throat> Um, and then I want to show here Aquisto in Canada as a CCS uh, facility um, and they have in, uh, injected 350,000 tons of CO2. It's 3.2 kilometers deep and 100 degrees Celsius. Actually, Rick Chalaturnik talked about that um, uh, 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 on Monday or Tuesday. Um, and uh, here we are thinking about potentially installing a CPG pilot test. And so Kevin Howe has done a master's thesis with me and we also have a World Geothermal Congress paper coming up uh, on uh, Kevin's calculations here uh, for a CPG pilot. And here now is, is the problem that, or and in general with CPG, we're worried uh, that, that we could get liquid loading. We wanna get in this annular flow regime in the production well. 
And so what Kevin has done is he used Buckley Leverett equation and uh, did some simulations using relative permeability curves that we have for the aqua store side. And then to calculate here the CO2 saturation um, in the well, in the reservoir around the production well inlet and the well production well itself for different absolute reservoir permeabilities. And what you see is that you first get a drop in uh, CO2 saturation, but then fairly quickly within weeks, uh, you go up to very high uh, saturations of CO2 in the production well so that you can avoid liquid loading. And so this is also showing this, um, this is for different absolute permeabilities. Each point here is a day. Um, and then uh, you get and you get, for different permeabilities, you're in the bubble flow regime and then get into slug or churn flow and eventually in all, almost all cases in the annular flow regime pretty quickly. And so finally, I wanna show uh, here CPG plus shallow, uh, uh, if you add a shallow reservoir to CPG um, that you can also do energy storage like solar wind energy storage at extremely high efficiencies. Um, and uh, I wrote down here, uh, CO2 is geothermally heated during deep uh, storage. Um, so that is extremely important to keep in mind that there's heat input into the CO2 as you store it. Um, the basic idea is that um, when you uh, wanna store solar wind uh, electricity or energy, uh, you take from a shallow reservoir the CO2, you cool it, you inject into the deep geothermal reservoir, the CPG reservoir, CO2 plume geothermal, and then you just let it sit there. And then when you need the power, you bring it back out, generate electricity and put it in the shallow reservoir. And you can actually do this simultaneously to uh, while you're running a CPG operation actually. So you can could run this as a CPG power plant and simultaneously do as, um, energy storage as well. And we have a paper in review on this uh, right now uh, about this uh, being able to combine this. <clears throat> And uh, what's uh, interesting and uh, uh, about this system is that when you look over here, energy storage ratio versus time, um, that uh, if you're above one, it means you get more energy out than you put in. And again, I want to point out that this gen uh, geothermal energy input at depth, of course, and that's why this is possible. But in this case, for our base case simulation, we get almost three times after 10 years, we get almost three times as much power out than the electricity that we put in, in uh, to begin with. <clears throat> and then, of course, this helps also with the CPG energy storage or earth battery, as we sometimes call it. Uh, cost. And so you see that it's competitive with several others. And it's at the power grid scale, the utility scale. So it's a very large scale, highly efficient energy storage system for solar or wind power, which might be interesting for NEOM um, and, um, and other places. <clears throat> 13 oh, minutes. Sorry? 13. Ah, okay. I'm coming to the summary. Very good. Um, so uh, in summary, I want to point out about CO2 plume geothermal or CPG. Um, that is a way to, to uh, for CO2 utilization. So it's a form of CCUS. And it's actually at the same time storing all of the CO2 permanently underground. It generates two to three times the electricity compared, uh, 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 compared to water using traditional water in the reservoir. Um, and therefore, it increases the geothermal resource base and reduces levelized cost of electricity. Uh, all of the CO2 is permanently stored, so it's simultaneous CCUS, so it's truly the full CCUS approach, uh, not just CCU or CCS. It helps make CCS economical due to power generation and can be combined with saline formations or depleted oil or gas fields, so with EOR, EGR. The energy storage or earth battery, CPG energy storage or earth battery system is massive utility scale, has very high efficiencies, if you want to call it. It's, of course, not really an efficiency because there's power input, but it uh, generates more power out than uh, you'd put at least solar wind power in. And it has a low levelized cost of storage. And uh, now here for, for Saudi Arabia, I have this figure from uh, Hussein Hote here um, with the CO2 emissions. We saw this earlier in this conference already. 
And um, in these regions, we should be able to, uh, in, at least in some of these places, to do CPG commercially. Um, and here, actually, we already did some preliminary calculations of gigawatt electric that can be generated with CPG, we think, uh, on some basic uh, back of the envelope or numerical calculations. And then also here, of course, in the, on this side in the Red Sea, we think this is uh, possible, but this we haven't yet um, investigated so much. Um, and you can see that this is uh, done at levelized cost of electricity that are uh, quite competitive, um, particularly for the brownfield case, uh, so where you already have wells um, compared to, uh, but also the greenfield cases uh, looks pretty good. And you see the cumulative CPG power capacity in gigawatt electric uh, down here. So um, I want to end with this slide and I just want to say here, these are the, C the citations that I mentioned here from our CPG uh, simulations. And again, since last year in 2020, in January, since I was at KAUST uh, um, and gave uh, this presentation or a previous version of, we have all these papers uh, published uh, in 2020 that you see in red here. So a lot has happened already uh, in 2020 in terms of CPG. CO2 plume geothermal, and uh, but now uh, the interesting part would be to see if we can do something on the ground um, in Saudi Arabia um, in terms of a pilot test or something like that for CPG. With that, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me again, uh, and uh, and uh, later on I'm happy to entertain questions. All right, uh, thank you, Martin. Great, great talk, uh, brilliant. And, uh, you know, I, I, I asked the audience, please uh, start 